Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to day two, or I should say video two of my greenhouse install. So it definitely took more than a few days to install this greenhouse, but by breaking the process up, it made it so much more manageable. So as a reminder, I'm installing the Triumph Greenhouse by Canopia in my back garden. It's a T-shaped orangery with really high sidewalls and a vaulted ceiling to give me lots of headroom to walk around. I wanted this greenhouse to be more of an extension of my home and a place that I can spend time in and around my plants no matter what the weather is. Because this orangery from Canopia is so elegant, I wanted to make sure that my flooring was equally as elegant. I wanted it to match. And I had a few options to choose from, from starting from a slab of concrete that could double as the foundation of the greenhouse. As a reminder, when installing a greenhouse, you have three options for flooring. First option is a slab concrete foundation. Second option is what I chose, which is to do a concrete perimeter. Then you would choose to do a flooring inside the perimeter like gravel or pavers. The third option, which is acceptable but not exactly recommended, is building the greenhouse on flat, stable ground. The drawback to this option is that the ground moves, and the most important aspect of greenhouse foundations is keeping everything level. So like I said, I decided to go with the perimeter foundation. I actually have a video showing how I did that linked in the description down below. I was able to pour my foundation even before the greenhouse was delivered to me because the specifications are clearly laid out on Canopia's website. So it was easy to build the foundation even before the greenhouse arrived. Now I had to decide what I wanted to put inside the perimeter of my foundation. I had to get inspiration for greenhouse flooring, so I headed to Pinterest. With a quick search of greenhouse greenhouse flooring, there's so many beautiful options to choose from, but I was looking for something that was elegant enough to stand up to the beauty of this orangery, but still easily installed by myself and a little bit of help and within my budget. And let me tell you all, when I saw this picture, I stopped my scrolling immediately and knew it was perfect. This inspiration picture was my jumping off point for my greenhouse flooring, and that was a diamond checkerboard pattern of concrete pavers mixed with gravel. As a reminder, the rest of my pathways in my garden are going to be a decomposed granite, which fits in perfectly with my California garden. So I wanted to make sure that the gravel that was in between the pavers meshed well with this decomposed granite. So with a few calls to landscape companies around me, I found out that you can actually purchase granite pebbles that are larger than decomposed granite, but the same material from the same quarry so that it will match the pathways perfectly. So once I learned this, I was off and running. Installation day started with the aggregate base being delivered. Aggregate base, sometimes called AB, the one I chose is called AB Blue, is a mixture of gravel and dust that you put at the bottom layer of the foundation, walkways, even sidewalks. The consistency of the gravel allows you to tamp it down to a level surface, so whatever you place on top of it, you know will be level and secure. We started our day with moving the aggregate base from the pile where it was dropped off into the greenhouse, a job made significantly easier thanks to the skid steer I rented. I'm telling you all, I used that skid steer as much as I could when I had it at my house. And next time I rent it, I will do the same. So the aggregate base filled in all the nooks and crannies and the unevenness of the ground in the greenhouse. Luckily, I have a pretty even ground in my back garden, but if your ground was a little bit more uneven, you could just level out the high parts and put more aggregate base in the low parts. While the guys were working on getting the base into the greenhouse with the skid steer, I started working on building what I will call a leveler. Uh, you can also call it a screeder, which is kind of more of a concrete term. You'll see what I'm talking about once I make it. The pavers that were going to go on top of the base foundation were about two inches tall, so we needed to bring the level of the aggregate base up to two inches below the top of the concrete perimeter. So the easiest way to do this was to create these levelers that had a two inch gap between the handle and the leveling part. You can see right there at the bottom of the screen. Luckily, I had some leftover two by fours from the concrete framing, so I took those and cut them about 12 inches shorter than the width of the greenhouse perimeter, and then put the handles on the ends that, like I said, were two inches from the leveling piece. This two inch difference gave us a guide to how much the aggregate base we needed to fill in the greenhouse and a guide to keeping it level. 
This part of the flooring install was definitely the slowest and the most tedious. As we moved the leveler along the floor, we leveled out any high parts and filled in any low parts. By cutting the leveler 12 inches shorter than the width of the base, we were able to slide it side to side as we moved along the greenhouse, allowing us to kind of skim the aggregate base into place. You can see here how the leveler helped us fill the base to the perfect level, two inches below the top of the concrete, just enough to fit the pavers so the pavers will come right up to the top of the concrete. So it'll be an equal level flooring that nobody's gonna stub their toe on. Like I said, this was the most tedious part of the whole process, but I do think it's the most important part. To make sure we had a really secure foundation, we misted the aggregate base with water and tamped it down. The tamping tool is an extremely heavy tool and you basically drop it on the base to compact the layer down. The water sets the aggregate base into place to give it an even more stable base layer. We slowly and meticulously worked along the flooring, tamping the base down, then checking the level of the base with the leveler. If there were any gaps, the tamping process created a low point and we could see it with the leveler. Fill it in, re-tamp it, then move on. The tamping tool was very, very heavy, so to save our backs, the three of us took turns tamping. Many hands make light work. Now onto the fun part. We started laying out the pavers in a diamond pattern. I knew I didn't want to cut the pavers, so I positioned them so there was a slight gap around the edges. This would get filled in with the gravel in the end, so I was okay with that, rather than going through the hassle of cutting pavers that probably wouldn't cleanly cut anyway. It took some finessing to perfectly line up the pavers. If they were crooked in any way at all, you could see along the diagonal that something was off. Luckily, Isaac is a bit of a perfectionist, so he was checking each paver to make sure it was lined up exactly. The gravel that was delivered was perfect. I'm so happy with the look of it, and it really made me excited to get the pathways installed in the rest of my garden. It's called 3 8 inch granite, and again, it's just a larger size of the decomposed granite I'll be using on my pathways. Other options I had were a salt and pepper gravel that had light and dark rocks mixed in, then of course the classic pea gravel. I think all the options would have looked gorgeous, but I really loved how the 3 8 inch granite is going to tie into the rest of my garden. Scraping the granite into place was probably the easiest part of this whole process. We used a landscape rake to do the big moving, then the guys had a fantastic idea to use a leaf blower. It had just enough power to blow the granite pebbles off the pavers and into the voids. It was so fun watching the greenhouse flooring appearing right before our eyes. We were all excited to see the final product after all of our hard work. So I've got the foundation poured, the flooring in. Next step is actually installing the greenhouse. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video to see the greenhouse in all its glory. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.